Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this fourth clip of a series, we return to a subject that I have not blogged upon for some time. That is, drives. Even though this subject is quite large and quite complex and covered elsewhere in far more detail, I think you will find this treatment to be quite unique. It is an ambitious attempt to explain how to control the hardest motor of all in five minutes using everyday language. Winder motors are easily one of the most complicated of the motor force control challenges found in any industry. It usually requires a career specialization, a decade of field experience, and possibly apprenticeship. So, how complicated is this winder motor control challenge, you say? This complicated. Here is a block diagram of a portion of the program for motor control of a center wind, courtesy of Clarence Claussen. Inside each of these blocks may be as much as a half dozen tuning parameters. All of this is to smoothly control one of the winder motors shown way down in the bottom right hand corner. We will use closed loop load cell tension feedback to the motor. So, how are we going to explain this complexity in five minutes? We will do this by using a simpler motor, a squirrel cage motor, or actually a squirrel in a cage. Some of you will be using AC vector motors, others servos, a few DC drives, and some oversped motors with clutches. However, the principles of good motor control are identical at the top level for all drive motor types. The motor's speed is controlled quite simply here by the number of food pellets in front of our squirrel. Here we show a speed of 30% of motor rating. So where is the wound roll? For simplicity, we wind right on top of the squirrel cage motor. In the real world, of course, we will have gearboxes, coupling, and other mechanicals which will change the gear ratio and add friction. But those are details that are easy enough to figure out. Our squirrel is very smart. He knows that good motor control requires first and foremost to get a close speed setting to begin with. He calculates the approximate RPM he needs from the very closely known line speed settings, gear ratio, and wound roll diameter. Here, he calculates that two pellets are needed to get close to the required conditions. Our squirrel is very smart. He knows that if his owner asks for a speed change, he must do this gently for best results. There are as many as six parameters here controlling the ramp rate and the transition on each end to steady state. This is what's called an S-ramp or S-curve. We all do gentle speed changes much like this when we accelerate or brake our automobiles. We move our nominal speed food pellets over to the food dish. The heart of motor control is the speed regulator. If actual speeds are slightly different than intended, this block nudges a correction. Control blocks like this have a PID, or PID, which stands for Proportional, Integral, and Differential Gains. These tuning parameters tell the block how aggressively to make a correction. Here the speeds match pretty close, but slightly low, so the regulator adds three quarters of a food pellet, and we move that to our food dish.
A limit block should follow every PID for reliability and safety. The bottom of the limit block protects our squirrel from dying of boredom. The top protects our squirrel from dying of exhaustion. If the speed must increase, we must add extra effort to accelerate the inertia. The amount of compensation depends on, among other things, inertia. If the inertia is small, such as the core here, when starting the winder cycle, the inertia comp factor is small, say one half pellet. However, later in the winding cycle, we have much, much larger inertias. Then, when speeds must increase to match target, we must have much, much larger effort, say two food pellets. It also takes effort to overcome friction. The squirrel measures the effort required to maintain speed during drive commissioning and applies that correction at all times. Here we have a multi-stage gearbox, so the effort to overcome friction is notable, say one food pellet. While most people don't enjoy negative feedback, it is essential for control of everything from steam engines to jet aircraft turbines and airplane flight surfaces. These parts of the control system you would normally not need to know, unless you program drives, in which case there will be a written and practical test. Wait a minute, Dave. You've spent much of your five minutes on setting up a drive without a single mention of tension control. That's right. Preparation is the key to quality control. 90 to 98 percent of the motor's effort is modeled. When we know about the source of an upset, such as speed changes, we deal with it before the load cell tells us. However, we must in the end acknowledge that our model of the real world will not be precisely the same as the real world itself. Thus, we need a tension setting from the operator shown on the left and a load cell for feedback shown on the right. However, the load cell's authority is very small, only 2 to 10 percent of the range of the motor depending on details we won't cover here. So, we run the signal from the load cell to a summing block for negative feedback, a PID to calculate appropriate corrections, and a limit block to protect the web, much as we did for speed. The only complication is that there are another dozen tuning parameters that must be set up here. So our smart our very, very smart squirrel notices that the load cell reading is running a little bit high and calculates he needs to subtract a food pellet to smoothly, quickly, but stably bring the tension back down. So our smart, our very, very smart squirrel does the final tally and finds for this moment in time, he needs four and three quarters pellets to do the best job of controlling tension, with only a small amount coming from the load cell itself. Our very, very smart squirrel must repeat calculations like this 10 to 10,000 times per second to keep up with changing circumstances. But this is no problem because our squirrel is very, very smart. So there we have it. Winder motor control simplified. 
Of course, we did not talk about taper tension, torque split, or any of the other motors in your winder line, which we will cover next time. However, if you followed this discussion, then the other complications are not nearly so bad. If you would like to learn more about drives, you could do no better than going to school. First off, my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 training that has been taken by 5,000 students just like you sensitizes you to the needs of your customer, the web. Must-know topics include tensioning, roller precisions, winding, and related topics. After that, you are in great place to go to a web drive school. The best and only course for web machine drives is taught by world-renowned drive expert and communicator Clarence Claussen. I have taken his course and have heard him speak many times elsewhere and have enjoyed every bit of it. Finally, for those of you who would like to learn by books, there is the must-have web handling handbook. We have an entire chapter on tension control and another whole chapter on drive control. Email me and I will send you information on how to get this reference. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will simplify tension taper, torque differential, and helper drives. If you have any questions or topics you would like to hear about, email me. See you next time.